Welcome to the Programming Electronics Academy podcast. Join us every other week as we explore how everyday people are creating extraordinary things in the world. Find us online at programmingelectronics.com. Hello, this is Michael with Programming Electronics Academy. I hope you're doing fantastic. Thank you so much for joining me this week. And you're going to be happy because we have a really interesting guest this week. Her name is Dr. Katerina Brady's. She works at the Berlin University of Fine Arts, and she works in the Design Research Lab. And what she's involved in is computer and human interaction in the textiles kind of area. So you kind of might think of wearables or something like that. Now, what she's worked on uh, is actually, it's called a, the light curtain. And it's, you know, you think of a curtain in your house just being sitting there being a nerd or whatever but what if it was more than that what if it was connected to uh, a smart home interface and you know maybe it could convey information you could interact with it in different ways uh, it kind of opens up a whole you know kind of opens your brain up to a bunch of different ideas of what might be possible there and Katarina really casts a very interesting vision about you know where electronics and textiles are going and I, I think you're really going to enjoy it so without further ado let's go ahead and jump right in Well, Katarina Brady's, thank you so much for being on the show. I really appreciate it. I, uh, I we reached out to you because we heard about this um, this light curtain project. Actually, it was featured on the Arduino Makers blog. That's how we came across it, and I just thought it was really interesting, uh, pretty impressive, and I'd like to learn more about that project. Um, but I guess I'm kind of curious uh, before we jump into that to learn a little bit about your background and how you got into designing something like this. Okay. Uh, well, originally I studied interface design at the University of Arts in Bremen, Germany. And uh, after my diploma, I actually moved to Berlin and I got a job uh, with Gish Just, who is uh, nowadays the professor for design research at the University of Arts. And back then she was a postdoctoral researcher with uh, the uh, Deutsche Telekom Laboratories, it was called, it's an affiliated institute with the TU, the Technical University in Berlin. And we were part of a research group on human-computer interaction in this institute. And this is how I actually um, started to do design research in human-computer interaction and more specifically in electronic textiles. And, and this is also part of my... Um, PhD thesis work that I actually began investigating uh, electronic textiles as a new medium for interaction and the project where we built the curtain is actually one of the research projects that we run uh, at the lab, so now it's closed, it's actually um, one or two years ago. And it's a very typical result of um, our work. So. Um, besides the, the research outcome, which is more theoretical, we usually build prototypes and have more tangible results as well. Okay, so it was really research that drove this, uh, the design and the implementation of this curtain? Yeah, pretty much. I mean, this is usually the frame of our work is a, a research project together with other parties such as electronic engineers and computer scientists and um, sometimes also user researchers and uh, service designers and people like that. Yeah, that's interesting. And I, you know, as I step back and I thought about the curtain, I mean, generally you think of curtains as something inert, you know, they're just there, they kind of block the light or uh, maybe provide some privacy. Um, and it was interesting to me to think, well, what if a curtain could be more than just that? And, and how would somebody interact with it? So I'm, I'm kind of curious, like, what were your thoughts on how people would interact with this curtain? Or did you, uh, did you have like a clear way you wanted people to interact with this curtain? Well, in electronic textiles, it's actually quite common to think about textile surfaces in the interior as something that you can work with. And curtains are very easy in that way because they they have a very open shape and they're just hanging there, just as you said. Um, but at the same time, it's uh, a huge piece of fabric that people will move on an everyday basis. And 
that was also our motivation. We were looking for something that was very, um, very well known to the users and and a very common object in the home because the the project that we were working on was actually like it, it is an acronym and the the full name of it is uh, Universal Home Control Interface, which is uh, uh, a bit <laughs> abstract to say so. Um, but it means that we were looking for opportunities in the home for a smart home environment and more specifically textiles and how they could become part of a smart home environment. And in that aspect, curtains are um, quite uh, nice to work with um, because in in this scenario here, we were using the curtain as a light source. So normally, a curtain will block the light when, when you close it and it's hanging in front of the window. But in this case here, even if it is blocking the light, you will still get some light from the same direction. So that was one motivation to use it. Oh, wow, that's so cool. Yeah, it's almost, it almost like flips the whole idea of the curtain on its head. You know, you think of it as blocking light. Now it's actually providing light, like a fixture providing light. That's really cool. Um, so this curtain is part of, like you were saying, kind of a bigger scope project like this. And if I understand, it's an open source home controller system, uh, like for making a smartphone, if I understand correctly. And this, so this was like one implementation of that. And um, wh how, like, are the, what type of lights are on it? Are they just LEDs? And how, um, is there like just, is there a standard way of attaching electronics to textiles and 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 this is just my ignorance like when i hear the word textiles my brain works at understanding exactly what that means is that just fab is that a fancy name for fabric like different kinds of fabric uh, it's not quite the same so to to start with the second part of your question um i think there's no exact definition or agreement on what textiles mean. So fabrics are clearly part of textiles, but they don't cover the whole. Um, and it, it seems that uh, a lot of uh, soft and bendable surfaces can be defined as textiles. So uh, then when you think about 3D printed structures, for example, that could act in a similar way to, to fabrics, um, these are nowadays also framed as a kind of textile, for example, for, for garments. Uh, without using the traditional textile production techniques. So the, the, the term is quite open, uh, I would say. Um, but in our case, we are indeed using a lot of fabrics and traditional production techniques that are also used um, for fabrics. Um, when it comes to attaching components to fabric in this case there are actually several ways that you could do it and, and we're working very traditionally here as well so we're actually sewing on the connections using conductive thread that can just put in be put into the sewing machine as a bobbin thread and then you just sew the trace and afterwards we're using off-the-shelf components uh, for, for the leads um, that have uh, holes, so you can actually sew them on by hand or also by machine, just like you would sew on a button. Wow, that's fascinating. And is so there's the the curtain then is is attached to a power source at some point. Is that is that I would assume then? Yeah, it is. Okay. And did you attach it directly to like line power, or did you have a battery associated with it, or? No, in this case, it, it has uh, it has line power indeed because it's using quite a bit of energy actually. So when you have this amount of LEDs, then it it uses up the energy from a battery quite fast. So this is why we actually attach it to a power plug, uh, which is in the upper left corner, so that uh, people won't recognize and that it doesn't get uh, ripped out of the curtain if you move it around. Okay. But it, it was just necessary to, to add this thing. Right. So how do people interact with the curtain? Well, they can do the same thing. I mean, this curtain is just like a normal curtain. It's meant to be open and closed in front of the window. Um, but then it also has some uh, additional controls for the lights on it. So it is actually both a, a standard curtain as well as a light emitting element in the room. Um, and there we actually have a capacitive 
slider so that you can control the intensity of the lights on the curtain itself. And this works a bit like um, a touch screen, but a very rough and very big one, actually, because we have uh, the capacitive antennas uh, embroidered on the surface of the curtain. Oh, wow, that's neat. So you're you're basically waving your hand in front of uh, like an antenna, essentially, and... Yeah, it doesn't look like an antenna. So when I say antenna, it's, it's a very technical term for a pattern on the curtain that you move your hand in front of, uh, and then the light will actually change magically. <laughs> nice. And so is it just, is it reading like the, uh, a change in an analog voltage? Is that how that's that's working? Well, capacitive reading is a bit more complicated. So in this case, we have different parts, like different capacitive antennas, and they will uh, measure the change in capacitance, which can be initiated by all sorts of things. But the, the human body is one thing that you can measure with a capacitive sensor. That is, so if you come close with your hand, then actually the, the value that a capacitive antenna will measure um, will change um, but the thing is that it is really quite delicate so in this case this is a, a, a very fast um, discharge cycle that is measured in the Arduino so it's like a really really technical <laughs> thing here um, but it's not that straightforward so it's, it's actually quite complicated to get a, a reliable measurement uh, out of this and and here we were just lucky we were collaborating with an engineer actually knew how to program this so that we actually have uh, quite reliable readings out of this um, embroidered element. Um, so how is there is there information that the curtain can convey um, in, in in a useful way to people in, in the room with the curtain? Is it is it like being used to communicate in some fashion? Yeah, exactly. I mean, this is the whole idea behind having it as an output device in a smart home environment that it can actually display any information that you want. So oh, what uh, the curtain displays is entirely up to you. So you can actually configure it in your smart, smart home environment system uh, if you want to. And if it's just that somebody rings the bell and you don't want uh, the, the bell to actually sound, so you can actually make the curtain alarm you, for example, or it is anything else, I don't know, like dinner's ready. You, you can come up with any idea. Right, you cool. So you can have like a screensaver for your curtains or something if you... Sort of, <laughs> yes. And, and I mean, it, it can be a very subtle way of uh, indicating information of any sort. So that, that was the, the whole idea behind it. Okay. Wow, that's really... So this thing is connected to the, connected to the internet uh, through Ethernet, is that correct? Yeah, it has a, a homemade Ethernet shield. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. That's amazing. So, all right, so you can interact with it that way through the Ethernet, or it's got this, like, direct user interface where you can change it ca with capacitive sensing. Yeah, but anyway, you need the smart home environment system to set up whatever is happening with the curtain um, well, for both the control uh, as well as the outputs. So, and, and in this case, we actually we, we we set it so that actually the the control, the capacitive control, would change the light. You could also change other things if you want to. It has a very simple protocol that it's using to to communicate with the smart home environment system. But this is something that needs to be um, actually configured somewhere else. It's, right. It's, Okay, so I, I get I see how cool that is now because you you can do whatever you want with the capacitive sensing. Yeah. It can it can control whatever you want. It doesn't have to be the LEDs on the curtain. It could be your garage door or whatever you wanted really for that matter, I suppose then. Yeah, exactly. Okay, I see. Oh wow, that's really cool. Okay, now I understand that you have or you had one of these designed for like a home a home environment and one also for a business environment. Yeah, exactly. That was uh, the other um, environment that we actually designed a curtain for. And in, in this case, it uh, was the, the door of a changing room so that the curtain could indicate if the room was occupied or not by displaying a nice pattern on the outside. 
That's cool. And was it was it in use in in a, a business somewhere? Yeah, it's actually installed in a, a model shop. So there's also a, a, a shop with all kinds of smart devices, like a smart mirror and, and actually tags on the products where the, the curtain is just part of the entire setup to demonstrate what can actually be done with a smart environment in, in a business uh, setting. Oh, wow, that's really cool. I would love to check that out sometime. Um, so what, when you were designing this, obviously you had, you were working with a team, uh, that comes with a set of challenges, but what would you say was the most challenging aspect of implementing this into a curtain? Maybe it is really, what we have with, with all our projects is that working with electronic textiles is not straightforward because there are no ready-made solutions. So you have to try out and test everything, uh, just like I, I mentioned before. Um, and that means really every tiny detail. And in this case here, we had to test and debug the capacitive senses a lot because it is so sensitive to all kinds of influences, like the length of the cables and the kind of connection that you're using. and um, there, it, it took really quite some time to get it to work reliably and, and quite a few changes and um, significant changes in the electronic setup as well as the code and that, that took a lot of time and a lot of trial and error and uh, we, we were actually happy that in the end we, we got it to work but it was actually really quite a challenge. Yeah, I could imagine. That is so cool. Um, so. With textiles, and again, this is going to highlight my ignorance, but I feel as though the integration of electronics and textiles is a relatively new thing. I could be totally wrong there. But I'm curious how, what do you see, do you have like a vision or a thought of how it will play out? Uh, do you think more of it will happen uh, as we move forward and maybe some of these practices of embedding electronics in textiles becomes more standard or, or more figured mm -hmm. out along the way? Or I mean, what are your thoughts on, on where this is going? Well, I sure hope that it is uh, further developing because I find it incredibly fascinating as a material to work with in human-computer interaction because my opinion is also that it, it provides a, a whole new way of interacting with electronic devices if we, we have a soft materials that we're interacting with. And um, I think what is an, an interesting development here is uh, the way that the function get more and more blended into the textile material itself. Um, for example, into fiber structures or coatings on the surface of, of a fabric. And uh, there's a lot of development in materials research that we as designers benefit tremendously from the the more established it becomes the more available the materials become the more we can actually play um, with with the textile materials as well and I imagine or it is my hope that one day we will actually uh, not feel a, a big difference between uh, a standard cotton or wool fabric and an electronic textile fabric because it looks and feels almost the same and we also might or hopefully have one day techniques and, and routines on how to work with these electronic fabrics that are um, just as smooth uh, as the way that nowadays uh, a garment is sewn uh, in the industry. So we actually we have uh, these ready-made uh, approaches to integrating electronics, be it in the fiber shape or as um, small hard components like we have the LEDs nowadays. Um, and, and generally my hope is that, that all electronics become more and more textile. Right now we're still working a lot with hard components because they're just really reliable and uh, very cheap and, and very well available and, and everything in fiber form is very hard to work with and, and it's very rare and it's still uh, in research. Um, but I hope that one day we can actually have all kinds of components in, in a textile or a fiber form. That would be great. Wow. Yeah, that paints a picture of just a very cool future. You know, like the idea that the, 
the electronic components themselves are are not necessarily not feeling added to but just integrated part of uh like one in the same essentially that's a pretty neat idea mm -hmm. huh so do you have um plans for the future for the curtain is it is the project been been uh put to rest or are there other smart home uh, devices that uh, your group is working on or <laughs> Well, the curtain is currently installed in the showrooms, so both the the, the smart shop and the smart home uh, showroom uh, that we have here in Berlin, and it's going to stay there and hopefully impress a lot of visitors. So that's that's for this curtain. Um, however, we are currently working on, on more projects in the area of, of smart home environments and electronic textiles and um, we actually learned a lot from building the curtain when it comes to working with other uh, surfaces. So we're not uh, merely working with, with the actuators, but also a lot of sensor structures in textiles. And um, there we're actually currently looking for um, opportunities, applications that make sense, actually, where people can really benefit from a textile form for their electronic device or, or inputs. Um, because this is where, where the fabrics obviously make most sense. And um, this is actually a very nice area to work with because we we are very we know textiles very well. We know how to deal with them, and they're uh, actually everywhere. Uh, so it's very natural material to us. And then to appropriate it for electronics is actually a lot of fun. Oh, that's so cool. Um so Katerina, we have a lot of people listening to this show who are interested in Arduino. Um, if they wanted to start getting into textiles and Arduino, and like, is there any recommendations you would make for um, the type of stuff they would be looking for online, or, or you know, somebody just kind of getting into that? Any thoughts on where to where to direct them? Um, Arduino is actually quite a good start. So you get a lot of standard uh, components um, with the Arduino Lily pad that uh, Lea Bickler uh, developed. Um, and it's also a very well documented platform if you want to start with the programming. And there's a, a lot of different programs around it that you can actually use. Um, the Flora is another platform that uh, is also uh, available for electronic textiles. Um, there's online shops like SparkFun where you can get a lot of um, other materials that you need and then also uh, very nice actuators, for example, electroluminescent wire and stuff like that. Um, so you can do a lot of shopping there and um, yeah, I think there's also some documentation left on the high low tech group or website from Lea Bickley. I can also recommend uh, Copacant's DIY website. That's actually Hannah Perner Wilson and Mika Satomi who are providing a very well documented uh, repository on uh, DIY solutions on electronic textiles. And, uh, really, really nice. So you can take a look there and start to rebuild the stuff and, and learn from that. It's actually, they've done a really good job on showing what is possible with very simple means. So that would be a start. All right, fantastic. Well, Katerina, thank you so much for taking the time to talk. I can't tell you how much I appreciate it. Thank you. You're welcome. Well, I hope you enjoyed that show. We'll make sure to link to everything that we talked about at the end, those websites that Katerina talked about. And I don't know about you, but man, it's really got me thinking about clothes and textiles, you know, into the future. What will that be like? I just, I don't know. It's quite, you can have quite an interesting thought experiment uh, if you go down that path. It's kind of fun. Well, hey, listen, if you enjoyed the show, I would really appreciate it if you could take the time to rate and review our show in iTunes. And I also welcome you to subscribe to the show in your podcast feeder. Well, thanks so much for your time this week. I hope the rest of your morning, afternoon, lunch, insomniac, midnight, whatever it might be for you. I hope it's fantastic, and I look forward to talking to you next time. This show is produced by Programming Electronics Academy, an online technology education company. We exist to help you create the technology you want in your life. 
If you are interested in learning more about Arduino, we welcome you to sign up for our free Arduino Crash Course, a 12-part video series with accompanying written lessons designed to teach the basics of programming Arduino. To register for the course, simply text your email address to 440-701-5311, or you can visit programmingelectronics.com and sign up there.